Ulysses, Part 2, The Wanderings of Odysseus, Episode 8, Lestragonians. The time, 1pm, or maybe 10 past. The scene, lunch. In this case, Bloom is crossing O'Connell Bridge, feeding the seagulls on the way, and on to Davy Burns Pub eventually for lunch, before going on out onto Molesworth Street and slipping into the museum to escape. The colour? Blood colour. Technique is peristaltic prose, and the correspondences include hunger equaling antifates, the food being the decoy, and teeth representing Lestragonians. The science or art is architecture. The meaning are bloody sacrifice, foods, shame, constables. Other characters include Mrs. Breen, Nosy Flynn, Davy Byrne, Bantam Lyons, and a couple of others who pop along to the pub. And one more gentleman who we'll mention at the very end. The plot. Pineapple rock, lemon plat, butterscotch. A sugar sticky girl shoveling scoopfuls of creams for a Christian brother. Some school treat. There's a hunger on Bloom as he roves out thinking about lunch. He crosses the river and on his way to eat, bumps into Mrs. Breen and chats with her for a spell. He thinks of practically everything else while he's chatting with her, though, wondering as far as whether or not he flushed the toilet before he left home. And eventually he heads on. He finds the people in different restaurants that he passes to be reminiscent of animals, and he keeps going until he slips into Davy Burns. Moral pub, he doesn't chat, stands a drink now and then. He orders a gorgonzola sandwich with a glass of burgundy wine and eats it happily with thoughts of his romantic adventures with Molly. The pub gets busier with bantam lines coming in full of the gold cup and his secret tip from it. Remember we got that in uh, Lotus Eaters. It's coming up to 2 p.m. so Bloom departs his eye on the clock headed for the library off Moldsworth Street. He helps a blind kid on the way before spotting Blaze's Boylan. To avoid him he slips into the museum across the way from the library. Change the subject. Did do you ever see anything of Mrs. Beaufoy? Mr. Bloom asked. Mina Purifoy, she said. Philip Beaufoy, I was thinking. Playgoers Club. Matcham often thinks of the masterstroke. Did I pull the chain? Yes, the last act. Yes. I just called up to her on the way in. Uh, is she over it? She's in the Lion Inn Hospital in Hollis Street. Dr. Horn got her. She's three days bad now. Oh, Bloom said. I'm very I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, Mrs. Breen said. And a house full of kids at home. It's a very stiff birth, the nurse told me. Oh, Bloom said. His heavy, pitying gaze absorbed her news. His tongue clacked in compassion. Mr. Bloom raised two fingers doubtfully to his lips. His eyes said, not here. Don't see him. Out. I hate dirty eaters. He backed towards the door. Get a light snack in Davy Burns. Stop gap. Keep me going. Had a good breakfast. Roasted a gnashed here. Point of stout. Every fella for his own. Tooth and nail. Gulp. Grub. Gulp. Gobstuff. He came out into the clearer air and turned back towards Grafton Street. Eat or be eaten. Kill. Kill. Keys. Two months if I get Nanetti too. That'll be two pounds ten, about two pounds eight. Three Heinz owes me to eleven. Prescott's Dye Works van over there. If I get Billy Prescott's ad, two fifteen. Five guineas about. On the pig's back. Could buy one of those silk petticoats for Molly. Colour of her new garters. Today. Today. Not think. In the Odyssey, the story of Lestragonians was of that of an island where Odysseus puts into with his full complement of 12 ships. He sends his men to find water, but Antifates, one of a race of man-eating giants called the Lestragonians, finds them and eats those men. Odysseus and his men run away, only for thousands of Lestragonians to come racing after them. Many of the men are speared and presumably eaten by them. 
Odysseus and some of his men escape on one ship, while the other 11 are destroyed. Ultimately, Odysseus is a terrible leader and a terrible person, but not so Bloom. It's often argued that Bloom has a feminine quality. It is interesting uh, that one of his thoughts about his encounter with the blind youth is that he is recognised as male when the kid says, thanks, sir. Bloom, is men uh, Bloom thinks to himself, ah, he knows I'm male. Bloom is mentally and emotionally aroused with thoughts of Molly and his lusts and loves for her. He calculates personal income for a few seconds and is pleased with the prospect and considers getting him her the silk petticoats before his thoughts return to that which he is trying to avoid thinking about. He's in a constant fight, uh, fight all day not to think about Boylan. And of course, then he appears. He isn't named, but his garb is, as we will later discover. Straw hat and sunlight, tan shoes, turned up trousers. It is. It is. Food and drink feature heavily in here again. Plums in the last chapter, gorgonzola sandwiches and this. Bloom talks glowingly of Burgundy as a pick-me-up, so if you aren't an abstinent, let's see how that works out for a week instead of coffee or five-hour energy drinks. Um, do 